Hey, it's Liz from No Trace. In this video, I'm going to be attempting to make my very first dress. It is a zero waste dress pattern brought by Chris Wood. It's called the parasol dress. So let's go. So like I said, this is a pattern by Chris Wood. It's a zero waste pattern called the parasol dress, and you can get it from her website. Her website is going to be in the description box below this video. It's chriswoodsews.com. And um, this isn't a sponsored video, but if you want to snag the pattern to make this dress, that's where you're going to want to go. I have printed out um, just one page from the pattern that goes over the measurements that you have to take. This pattern does not require um, you to print out a bunch of pieces of paper and tape them together. Instead, you're going to be taking measurements off your own body, and that'll help you figure out how to cut the different pieces for your pattern. So I've got my measuring tape. I'm going to go ahead and take the measurements. They are under bust, bust, and hips. So I'm just going to take my measuring tape. I'm going to open up my sweater here, and I'm just going to go under my bust to get the first measurement. And then I'm going to go ahead and get the other two and write them down. All right, I have my measurements written down on this piece of paper. And now we just plug these numbers into a few simple formulas to figure out exactly how to cut our fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. One thing to keep in mind is that when you're working through these, you decide if you want sleeves or not. The way this dress is designed, sleeves are optional because the bodice covers, you know, covers a lot. So I'm going to leave out the sleeves and I'm going to finish up my measurements. Once all the numbers are figured out, I'm going to go ahead and get my fabric and figure out how wide my fabric is. That's going to determine how to cut it in the next step. I got this fabric at a really cool fabric uh, cooperative here in Santa Cruz called the Fabrica. So it was super affordable, which makes me not as scared to mess things up on my first try of this dress because you need a few yards if you're going to be making a dress. And I also want to point out that I have my pattern up on my computer too. So I didn't print the whole pattern out. I just printed one page out. I have the pattern on my computer and that is how we are going to make this dress. So there's two different typical fabric widths, either around 40 to 43 inches or around 54 inches. So I just want to see how wide the fabric is that I got and that will help me figure out how to lay this out for cutting. Okay, so I can, I've got this on my cutting mat, which is 36 inches, and it just goes over a bit. So I can tell that I'm gonna be working with the um, folding and cutting layout for the smaller size, which is a 43 inch width type of fabric. I need to add up all the numbers to figure out how to fold out this fabric. My skirt length is 31 inches plus the bodice width is 12 inches. And then I have two ties that are two inches wide. So I need to have, how much is that? 31 plus 12 is 43 plus four, I need 47 inches of fabric spread out to fold it in half. Okay, so I need 47 and then 47, and then I can get my cuts taken out of this fabric. So let me get it set up like that. All right, you're gonna want a big surface to work with like on the floor somewhere or on a really big table to get this big piece of fabric folded the way that you need. So like I said, I needed 47 inches fabric and now I need to cut the panels for my skirt, which are gonna be 40 inches wide. This is a little over 40 inches and 31 inches long. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my measuring tape and I'm gonna measure out 31 inches in a few different spots so that I can make a nice straight line on this fabric. Okay, I've made a line that is 31 inches. So now I'm gonna be cutting through both layers of fabric. And then I'm also gonna be cutting on cutting this fold. So I'm gonna start by cutting, trying to follow the marks and make a nice straight line. And then I'll go ahead and cut 
the fold as well. All right, that is cut. Now I'm just cut right here in the fold. I should mention also that you probably want to wash your fabric if you're worried about it shrinking. Okay, these are my two skirt panels. So I'm going to fold these up and set them aside. Now I'm going to cut out the bodice panels and the ties and the pockets and the facing from this other portion of fabric. I have more than much more fabric than I need, but I'm not going to cut that just yet. So the bodice width, let me get my handy sheet, is 12 inches, and then the length is 27 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure the width. Make sure I have 12, yes. And I only have two extra inches, so I might have done something wrong here. But that's okay, I have so much other fabric. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these. Let's see, the ties are also gonna be 27. So I'm gonna first cut to 27 inches just to make this a little bit easier um, to work with. And that's gonna give me my two bodice panels. Actually, no, I should cut it. Hmm, I'm being indecisive here. Okay, I'm gonna cut it to 27 inches first. Okay, so I'm getting my measuring tape again. Obviously, you can use your, your cutting mat if you have one. And I am going to mark at 27 inches. And just go all the way down. Okay, so I marked 27 and I'm just gonna cut. 27 seems really long, but remember that the way this dress is constructed, these panels are actually gonna wrap from front to back. So that's why they are 27 inches, okay? And then I'm just gonna cut right along here where my fabric meets, um, where one side of my fabric meets the other. And then I have to cut these down a little bit more. So my bodice panels are only supposed to be 12 inches wide. And this is more than that. This is 14 inches wide. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold these in half and fold them in half again. Make sure that this one edge is lined up really nicely. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut off these extra two inches. Those two inches are gonna become a, um, tie and then I uh, two ties and I need two and I need two facings as well. So let me just cut off these two inches and make sure that we want to cut the pockets out. So I'm going to pull this part over and this last part is the pockets. Okay my pockets are nine inches um, by 12 inches so I'm going to do the same thing go ahead and mark and cut it down to nine by 12. Inches. Okay so here's my pockets. And this is all that's left um, that doesn't go into the pattern. So that's pretty cool. And this is, I don't know, enough for something. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off and set it aside. Okay, and remember I'm short two ties or two facings. So I'm gonna just fold this fabric up and just do one long, um, actually I'm gonna need two, um, two inch straps from this fabric. So I'm gonna fold this and I'll probably fold it again and just cut two two inch pieces. So after everything is cut, the first step is to sew two of these into ties. So we're just gonna fold them with the right sides together and then sew them with a half inch seam allowance. All right, at the machine, I'm just folding these in half um, with the right sides together and we're doing a half inch seam allowance and i'm going to do a back stitch at the beginning and the end okay so i sewed the two ties and now the instructions say to trim the seam allowance so that means i'm just going to cut off the extra fabric on the outside of the stitches that i just made 
on both ties. Another way to have done this would have been to make these a little bit narrower and used a narrower seam allowance and then there wouldn't be the little waist. But that's okay, I'm gonna add this to my bag of stuffing and teeny bits waist. And I'm gonna cut off the other side. Next up, we wanna turn these ties right side out. I'm gonna use the safety pin, the biggest pin you have, and just um, thread it through. Okay, so my ties are turned right side out. Now we're supposed to iron them flat and I think we want the seam to be face down, sort of centered. And I'm gonna do this. Once they're ironed, we're supposed to tie a knot in one end. Okay, now the pattern says we get our bodice panels. So these are 12 by 27 so for my measurements and fold it in half lengthwise because remember these are going to kind of like sit on my body like this okay so folding it in half lengthwise to find the midpoint and then i'll just put a pin on each of these um, at the middle okay so i found the middle point i put a pin there now i'm going to open this right side up and I'm going to put the tie with the raw edge right here on my pin. And I'm going to pin it in place in the middle. And then we get one of our facings, which is these other two inch straps. And we're going to lay that right side on top of our bodice panel. Okay, I'm going to get this under my presser foot and figure out 3 eighths of an inch. I think that is right about there. Okay, and I'm gonna do a back stitch at the beginning and the end, it just goes straight down. All right, these are sewn together, both of the bodice panels. And now it says to press the seam allowance towards the facing. So I'm going to iron the seam towards the little skinny two inch facing strip on both of my bodice panels. All right, now my instructions say to place the two bodice pieces on top of each other with the right sides together and line up these seams where the facing is. Okay, now we're gonna be marking three inches from this bottom edge, and we're gonna be, I'm gonna use my measuring tape. We're gonna sew just a little three inch line of stitches that is one eighth of an inch away from the seam that we made with the facing and the bodice panel. So we're just going to be right under that line with a little three inches of st stitching on both sides of the bodice panel. I'm just going to do a little three inch mark and I'll take this to the machine. Okay, next we're going to open up the whole bodice panel and we want to be looking at the wrong side and we are going to press this facing what we want to do is fold the raw edge of the facing so that it's touching our seam um, and then press that with the iron all the way down on both sides. All right, so you can see that I have pressed the facing in half towards that seam and now we're going to open it up and press it or fold it rather another time so that we have no raw edges in the facing. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold it once more and press it. All right, so now I have two really nice folded edges. I'm just gonna edge stitch along the fold to hold the facings in place. All right, I finished the edge stitching along this top opening part of the bodice. It's coming together. 
So now it says to fold it with the right sides together, like so, with the ties at the top. And then we're gonna do some pinning and sewing down here, down in these bottom corners of the, the top part of the dress. So I'm gonna make sure this is laying nicely. Looks pretty good. And okay, it says to again, mark three inches. So I'm gonna be marking three inches down on this bottom corner here. Oops, with my measuring tape, put a little mark at three. And same thing over here at three. Okay, and it's so we're gonna be sewing from the bottom edge of the bodice, like if we imagine it on ourselves, like right here for just three inches. And we wanna use a one inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just a quick little seam on both of the bottom edges over here. Okay, so I made that little three inch seam. Now we're gonna take it back to the iron and we're gonna do a similar process that we did to finish the facing. We're gonna open up this seam and we're gonna press all along the sleeve and then we fold it in and press it again so that we get a nice finished edge here on the sleeves. Okay, so I've pressed the sort of sleeve or the arm opening and I'm gonna go ahead and edge stitch all the way around this opening and this opening. And then I think the bodice is pretty much done. All right, here's the top. I got the sleeves finished and here are the two ties. So this part is done and we're ready to move on to the skirt. So let's go. All right, now we are gonna do the pockets. So we are gonna take our little rectangles that are nine by 12, I think, something like that. And we are gonna finish three of the sides. You can either do a zigzag stitch or use an overlocker or a serger. I'm gonna go ahead and use my serger because I have one and it'll just be a little bit faster and cleaner. So I'm gonna do three sides. Okay, so three sides are finished on the pockets here. I just serge them together because it's faster that way. I'm gonna press the finished um, edges towards the wrong side of the fabric. So I'm folding it over and ironing it a quarter of an inch on these three uh, sides that I just finished. All right, I'm folding the top unfinished edge over one inch and pressing it, and then I'm gonna fold it another inch and press it. I should probably be precise since I've got two pockets and I want them to match. I'm gonna actually measure. I'm doing one inch, pretty much, and then another inch. That way my pockets won't look funny next to each other on my dress. All right, so the pockets are both edge stitched, so that fold is in place. Now we're gonna get them attached to our front skirt panel for the dress. All right, I'm gonna grab the skirt panels and we're gonna use one of them as the front and attach the pockets. I have to look back at my notes and remember what's the width and what's the length. So I still have my handy notes. Let's see, the width is 40 inches. The length is 31. So this must be my length. So I want to look at it as though it's going to be on me like this. So I've got it with the width running horizontally in front of me. And we're going to be measuring where to attach the pockets. And the pattern says we're gonna go eight and a half inches down from the top edge and three inches over. All right, so I have two straight lines to work with. I want my edge folded over, pretty edge up in this top corner. And then I'm gonna do my best to line up the side with the straight line here. And then I'm just going to pin it in place and I'm going to sew it. All right, first pocket is attached. You can kind of see that. I'm realizing now I should not have used blue chalk 
all over <laughs> the dress. It'll wash off, but yeah. Anyway, anyway, lesson learned there. I'm going to attach the second pocket in the same way. I'm going to use less blue chalk this time though. Next, we're going to be sewing the two skirt panels together on the sides. So we want the right sides together and just line up those selvage edges with each other. And then we'll just sew, it says to sew with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna take this to the machine and stitch it up on both sides. All right, as I was sewing, I realized that the selvage edge, the white area here with the label on it, was actually a half inch. So I had to make my side seams a half inch to hide the selvage edge. So slight modification that I made there, but I think it's fine. All right, I'm supposed to finish the side seam now using either a zigzag stitch or a serger. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on my serger real quick. Okay, next we are gonna be gathering the top edge of the skirt. So this is my top edge. And it says to do that by setting my machine to the longest stitch length and the highest tension. Don't back stitch. And then I'm gonna sew a quarter inch from the raw edge all the way around and then a quarter inch below that all the way around. All right, my longest stitch length is five. So I've put it on five. Now I'm moving my tension knob up here. I'm moving it all the way up, so plus three, and then my length is, I don't know if you can see that, it's at five millimeters. Not milliliters, millimeters. Now I'm going to find that top edge again. I can tell because that's the edge where the pockets are open. Okay. Hang on. Where is it? Okay, this is my top edge because I can see through the back of my fabric where my pockets are. And I'm gonna go a quarter inch from the raw edge all the way around and then a quarter inch below that all the way around. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, I can feel a little gathering. Oh yeah, I was supposed to press the seams towards the back. I'll just hold it in place here. All right, I've never gathered anything before, so I don't think I quite did that. <laughs> I was supposed to start at the side seam and I started in the middle or somewhere near the middle, but that's okay. But the fabric started to bunch up before I got all the way around. But let's see if we can still make this work. So we've got two rows of of really stretched out stitching and the tails. I probably should have left really long tails. I've got some tails to work with. So I'm gonna lay this bodice down on my work surface. And what I'm gonna do is tug on the tails from these two seams until this width is the same as my bodice. You can see that I'm gonna have to pull on it a bit more to make it the same opening size. So let's see, let me find my tails. And then I'm just tugging. I mean, it's already pretty gathered, but I need to tighten it a bit. Okay, so I'm gonna tug on tails, top, the top tails, not the bottom tails. Tug on these top threads. Tails, threads, you know, you know what I'm saying. So tug on these threads and I want to try to distribute the gathers evenly around the skirt. And I'm going to try to bring in the width so that it matches my bodice. So this might take a minute. All right, I got the skirt gathered up to match the width of the bodice. I gotta say it's looking really big. So I don't know how this is going to fit, but I am remaining optimistic. I'm putting the bodice inside the skirt face down and I'm lining it up at the side seams and I'm going to pin these together on the sides. Okay, I need to find the middle of the skirt. 
And that is easily done by finding the sides, folding it in half, and then we'll just put a pin um, at the middle. Okay, so the bodice is pinned in four places to the skirt. Oh, there's a lot of fabric. Now I'm gonna sew, probably should add a few more pins. I'm gonna add a few more pins and then I'm gonna sew with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So that means I'm gonna be sewing just below the stitches that I made for the gathering. Okay, it's sewn together. So now I'm supposed to hem it, but I feel like I should try it on and see how short I wanna make it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it right side out. Okay, something happened here. So I had to take out this part of my seam because I caught too much of the bodice in my seam. I'll be, I'll be right back. Okay, I fixed that little weird thing I did on the side of the dress. I tried it on and I think I found the height that I want, the length for the skirt. So I just sort of folded it in a couple spots. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna measure this uh, hem length that I wanna make. And I'm gonna measure that and then go all the way around the skirt and press it at that same length. And then I'm gonna try it on one more time and make sure that this is the length that I want. All right, so the six inches is gonna be perfect. The instructions say to edge stitch and then fold, fold again and press. What I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna edge stitch or, or use my serger or a zigzag stitch. I'm gonna cut off about three inches of fabric and then I'm just gonna fold it and then fold it again. I'll show you. Um, but first I'm gonna go ahead and cut off three inches of fabric off this bottom raw edge. All right, I finished pressing and now all I have to do is sew this hem. I'm gonna start on the side and get it under my presser foot. I'm gonna sew really close to the edge of my bottom hem, hopefully. Yeah, I can see that. And I'm just gonna go all the way around. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the dress. I would say that next time I might make the bodice panels and actually a little bit longer because I feel like it's hitting kind of funny right here. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with this dress. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it inspires you to get out there and make your own zero waste dress. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the No Trace channel to get notified about all of our videos. We put out a new video every single week on zero waste sewing, crafting, and lifestyle tips. So I'll see you again very soon.